Hey, what's up? Dusk here. So we're going to talk about Grandpa's abilities. We're going to go over the tier list. We're going to go over some combos uh, that you can do with the Grandpa abilities. Although you probably won't ever really utilize the combos because it requires all three family members to be coordinating their builds together. And that's something you won't do in solo queue and you probably won't even do when you're playing with your friends. This is something that you'll really only utilize if you were like playing in a tournament or doing like really high tier play. Which is weird that they have these sorts of like mechanics and combos in a game that is professed profoundly to be purely casual. <laughs> so, I don't know, it's kind of weird, but anyway, we're going to talk about all of it. Uh, first, let's start with the D tier, the worst grandpa abilities in the game. The first one we'll go over here on the right is our chicken one. This is called Animal Farm, and it increases the chicken detection radius. This is something that can be useful in a few niche scenarios. Uh, the only one that really comes to mind for me is the chicken on gas station by the shack ladder. That chicken is, as far as I know, always there. And with the increased radius, it will always detect somebody crawling up the ladder. So you can kind of use it to keep an eye on that ladder. Uh, but that's about it. And trading other abilities for that that would be far more impactful just seems like a waste. So that lands that ability hard in the D tier. Next, we have Barge the Point. It's a uh, icon over here to this side. Barge the Point lets you break uh, barred doors with just one shoulder slam. Now, this doesn't affect Johnny because his passive allows him to do that anyway. And these don't affect Leatherface because he doesn't barge doors. He cuts them with his saw. So this only really leaves uh, the other few family members to use this. And it's just not something that they're ever really going to need to do in uh, you know, a clutch situation. About the only time I think this would come in like really handy is possibly on gas station. If you're chasing somebody out with a uh, cook and they bar the door and they try and pick the lock at the front of gas station, which is getting removed um, or locked up in the next patch anyway, right? So, and there's probably, you know, there's a few other scenarios, of course, uh, you know, some fuse boxes that they might try and hide behind a, a barred door and do. Um, but again, those are so rare and you can preemptively just break those doors ahead of time and you don't need that perk to do it. So um, just have Leatherface break the doors, have Johnny do the doors or just take the time to do it with uh, somebody else and just don't wait for, you know, that clutch scenario to pop up. So extremely niche, uh, lands itself in D tier. Next, we're moving up to C tier. Now you see I've got a blue circle around one of these. That means it combos with another grandpa ability, but that's not up on the t uh, tier list yet. So we'll come back to that. But first, let's start out with the blue circled uh, grandpa ability here. This is, let me bring it up here, well-fed youngins. Uh, whenever Grandpa's sonar is activated, all family members instantly regain 50 stamina. This is essentially RNG. Now, Grandpa's sonar uh, intervals are not random. They are very specifically spaced. But being in a situation where you're low on stamina that just happens to coordinate with a roar so that the stamina gain is useful for the situation you're in is completely RNG, which means this, uh, this ability on its own could potentially be useless for an entire match and is very weak early. It doesn't really get strong till you get grandpa up to about level three or so. And even then it's completely RNG. Uh, you could have grandpa at level five, and almost actually never get much use out of it. So it's just, it's not great. Um, and here's the caveat to this. On its own, because it's a combo perk, right? Like it's got that blue circle around it. If you don't combo it with the other perk, it's one tier lower. So this is on its own, not comboed, is a D tier perk. Uh, which is kind of a weird way to set up a tier list. But I feel like it's the best way uh, to do it. And as I, you know, as we go over the rest of the tier list, you'll see the combos and it'll make more sense. So it's a C tier uh, perk if you combo it, but without the combo, it's D tier. Pretty bad, in my opinion. All right, next we have experienced stalkers. 
Uh, this one is standalone, uh, good on its own. It doesn't really combo much with anything. Uh, reduces the family proximity warning range for victims. This one is most useful with Hitchhiker, Sissy, and most specifically Johnny. Johnny seems to have a smaller tear radius than the rest of family. Um, he doesn't really have much audio. Victims typically don't hear Johnny coming. And if you take that with Johnny, he'll basically have almost no warning radius whatsoever, allowing him to, you know, patrol up on Vix and get some pretty free hits. But if you have Leatherface in the area, Leatherface's tear radius is so huge that victims are almost constantly in the tear radius uh, which is basically the same thing as having no terror radius. And in, in those scenarios, like on Family House, um, good victim players are just going to go ahead and do their thing even inside a terror radius. So uh, even if you have Johnny on the team, it's a fairly weak ability, lands itself in C tier. Uh, next on the list there, we have the little icon all the way to the left here. Someone looks like they're falling down. This is well, well, well. Victims that jump down wells take 50% more damage. Wells don't do that much damage to begin with. It's a very small amount of damage. And Vix aren't welling like 10 times a match. You know, you might see a, a Vic well like three times a match, you know, on average maybe uh, per victim. And increasing that very small amount of damage by 50% three times is like maybe one hit from a family member. And you're going to chew up a whole grandpa ability for it. it well, 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 is pretty, pretty bad. And like it, it's almost a D tier, right? The only thing that really puts it in C tier is that if you do get Vicks that are hitting the wells a lot... Uh, like, um, man, gas station, right? I always keep coming back to gas station, but that map has a lot of technicality to it. Uh, you do sometimes see victims do that well over and over and over again, especially the one, you know, you're leaving through the gap by the toilet and there's that, uh, well right there and the one in the front yard. And, you know, if they do hit that like four times, three or four times, again, it does amount to like an extra hit, right? And sometimes that's enough. Uh, still not great, but, you know, I think I'm just enough to put it in C tier. All right, and that's all we got for there. Let's move up to the next B tier. Now we see this has a blue ring around it, which means it combos with the other blue ring. We'll, we'll get to that. Those combo up there. But first, let's start here on the far right side. This is... What's this here? The three people standing next to each other. This is called In Sync. When active, the family focus ability duration is increased and the cooldown is reduced. The uh, family focus ability is actually extremely strong, and it's something that once you get decent at the game, you will constantly use. Um, if you're a hitchhiker, you're going to constantly use it to check on the status of your traps to make sure none of them have been disarmed. You're going to look at the fuse box to make sure it's still shut uh, to give you a heads up. If you're cook, you're going to use it to look at your padlocks. If there's a chase going on, you're going to use it to look at your uh, teammates to see where they are so you can figure out where the chase is going on. If you see a victim rattling a toolbox or a bone pile, you can turn family sense on and then actually see the victim. You'll have a wall hack on them for uh, a few seconds. So, like, it's something that you will constantly, constantly use. So having, um, you know, a family ability that makes, you know, reduces that cooldown is actually pretty useful. And so that lands it in B tier. All right, next we have the, looks like broken glass or shattered glass here. Uh, this is Wind Doom, I believe, right? Wind Doom, yes. Uh, victims take 50% more damage when jumping out of windows. Currently, this perk only works on Family House. But you can have multiple, gra oh, you will have multiple grandpa abilities. So ideally, if you are using this, you are on Family House. If you're not, you do need to unequip it. Make sure you have it in a separate loadout whatever it is but if you're using it and it is on family house um and the the victim jumps through the window when it still has glass in it that does a lot of damage and increasing a lot of damage by 50 percent is actually kind of devastating 
especially if you have a hitchhiker trap with a bleed laying out in the front yard. They jump through that glass, land in the hitchhiker trap, take the bleed damage from the hitchhiker trap. That's going to kill a lot of victims just right up front. They will need to be Anna to probably survive that or as someone with a lot of toughness and the ability stunt double and they're still going to need to rush to get down the well or have sanguine shadows or a heal or something that they can use uh, none of those will be a viable option if a family member responds to them so yeah wind doom combined with that stuff is devastating um, so that lands itself pretty strongly in the b tier here all right, next we have uh, the one that is circled in blue here. This is called Excited Grandpa. Delays between Grandpa's sonar ability are reduced by 20% at each level. Now, at level 1 Grandpa, the intervals are pretty long, and that isn't really that impactful. But as you get up to level 3 and 4, it's all of a sudden much more impactful. And that's why it combos... Let me get the other ability here, make sure I get the names right on all of these. With well-fed youngins, when Grandpa's sonar is active, all family members instantly regain 50 stamina. So toward late game, when you're at level 3 and level 4 Grandpa, uh, you're going to get stamina back more often because Grandpa is going to roar 20% more. Now, 20% more is a little on the weak side. Honestly, I would like if that was probably closer to about 30%. Uh, otherwise, this would be a little bit better. But the combo perks, keep in mind, if it's a combo perk, it's only this is only in B tier if you combo it with well-fed youngins, which is a C tier perk even when comboed. If this isn't comboed, then this is a C tier perk, and that's because it just really doesn't kick in till late game when you get like the faster intervals of level three, level four, grandpa, uh, and if it's the first ability that you unlock or turn on, then it's going to delay a better grandpa ability, right? So it's a little rough, but if you, yeah, again, if you combine it with well-fed youngins, then it's a B tier. Are these worth taking together to get a B and a C tier perk? Probably not. Uh, that's still not great, but it is a combo. All right, next we have the little fist there. It's the grapple one. It's called suffocating grip. Close Encounter minigame is easier by 20% for the perk holder. Now, uh, what is this? This has a note here. It says, The description is not accurate since the perk is a family perk and also works for every other family. Oh, yeah, 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 whatever. When it says the perk holder, it just means when Grandpa's active, everybody becomes the perk holder. Uh, but, yeah, so this is going to allow you as family to win a lot more grapples. And when you win a grapple as family, that kills the victim outright. So that's pretty strong. And a 20% increase is significant. The victim version is only 15%. And with that one, the results are super strong and very noticeable. So suffocating grip is going to allow you to really just win almost every grapple unless they're near full health. Um, definitely, if they're half health, they're, they're going to get killed. Uh, so very powerful. However, most of your better victims are probably not going to grapple. They're going to go for backstabs or evasion. But there are a few scenarios where you can force grapples. And that's at like pressure tank and fuse box. If you're sitting there guarding it with your back to the wall, they'll have no choice but to try and grapple you first and then interact with the pressure tank or then interact with... Uh, the fuse box, uh, because otherwise you're going to hit them and interrupt the interaction, right? So that will be a scenario where you can actually force that, and in those scenarios, that's devastatingly powerful, right? Uh, now, pressure tanks are going to get nerfed, and they're going to get moved around, especially on Slaughterhouse, so this might become a little bit less useful once that Slaughterhouse uh, pressure tank gets moved. But it's still extremely valuable in the family house fuse box scenario, the gas station fuse box scenario. Probably a little less on uh, Slaughterhouse, but there's still two locations where you can force a grapple, right? And, uh, you know, some of the more aggressive victims do run grapple builds anyway. So, I don't know. I feel like, in my opinion, this lands itself in a strong B area as long as you're doing things where you can, you know, force that interaction. 
All right, now let's move on to start getting some of the actual strong abilities in the A tier. We have a whole set of comboed uh, abilities here. First, uh, let's start with the not comboed one, and that's Nobody Escapes Hell. This is just on its own a, uh, a straight-up A tier grandpa ability. Let me get the uh, description here. The minigame for the locks is 40% more difficult for all victims, that's actually pretty significant. And if you can get that thing online very early, that can really slow Vix down. So just super strong and a solid A tier grandpa ability. Definitely recommend having that one in your arsenal if you can. And because you don't need to combo it with anything, it works great in solo queue or great with your, uh, if you're playing with your friends, but you don't feel like trying to coordinate you know, some crazy, like, try-hard combo together. <laughs> now that brings us to these three comboed perks that work really well together. Let's start with the little chainsaw icon to the right. Swing for the fences reduces the stamina cost on melee attacks by 20%. Pretty decent, but not A tier on its own. A B tier on its own. All right, we'll move over to the next one here, the little jogging person. This is don't have all day stamina drain while sprinting decreased by 20%. I think you're starting to see a theme and why these combo together on its own, uh, a B tier perk, probably a weak B tier, but a B tier because patrolling is a pretty big deal and uh, stamina consumption matters. Uh, the less stamina you use while, you know, sprinting and patrolling around, the more stamina you're going to have for swinging that weapon, right? So it works for everybody except Leatherface, obviously. All right, and this brings us to Brute Strength. This is the one over here with the little blood droplets. Brute Strength, slightly increased melee damage for all family members. Now, if you're using less stamina to run around, you're using less stamina per attack, and your abilities now do a little bit more damage, this can be a great way to boost damage, especially for Vix that like to spam attacks. Sissy and Hitchhiker will benefit most from this, but Johnny can as well. This would be a great build to run like, let's say, Hitch and Johnny or Sissy and Johnny, where you want to do a lot of aggressive patrolling and just some really nasty rundown. You could even do it with Sissy uh, and Hitch as well. And if you throw Serrated into your build, you basically don't even need Savagery at that point. You can put everything into Endurance. Uh, you know, and blood harvesting if you want to. So together, if you take those three together and combo them up, that's a solid A tier combo in my opinion. Uh, I've never run it myself. Uh, I would like to, but I tend to play pretty casual. I mean, I'm always playing for the wins and we, you know, we end up winning most of our family matches on stream, but I still don't go to like this level. We're not playing this uh, try hard, but I think it'd be fun to do sometimes. So maybe when I get an opportunity, uh, I'll get some people together and we'll, of course, that's going to require people respecking, and it's a pretty big ordeal to go through, but we'll do it sometime and, and maybe I can show it off. All right. And this brings us to last but not least, the S tier, which has a single grandpa ability in it. And I don't think anybody's surprised to see this exterior alarms by far the most powerful grandpa ability uh, to the point that if you see somebody with exterior alarms and you are running a B tier uh, ability or lower, just unequip it to make sure that the exterior alarms activate as soon as possible. The only other perk worth grabbing uh, with this is nobody escapes hell. The other two, remember these, um, if you don't combo these together, they're B tier. So again, B tier or lower, not worth taking if exterior alarms is on the table. If you ever pop by my stream, 90% of the time I'm running exterior alarms. And so I just we just don't bother with any of the other abilities because it just overshadows them so much. So you're taking this and nobody escapes hell or just exterior alarms or you're doing this like three point combo, I think should be like the strongest grandpa abilities that you can do. But, um, you know, I could also see, uh, let's say you take exterior alarms, maybe two people have exterior alarms, which will help ensure that that pops up first. 
I could see the third person then taking, uh, you know, like a B tier, a single B tier perk at that point, and you'd still be pretty strong to go on family as long as you do have uh, one to two family members that are working on blood. Blood harvesting and blood collection is something that the vast majority of family members just do not understand. Um, and what I mean by don't understand is they don't understand how powerful <laughs> leveling up grandpa is. That is hands down the most powerful tool you have on the family side. Uh, getting grandpa leveled up quickly puts so much pressure, even on a high level Vix, they will start to panic if they see those levels uh, start popping onto grandpa and it will force somebody to try and get a bone shiv over there and kill grandpa. And if you're watching him, it's nine times out of ten, you're going to get a free kill. Sure, they'll get the shank off on Grandpa, but there's a good chance they're going to die for it. And if they don't, you're going to end cap them, or they're just going to take an insane amount of damage. And they're going to be kind of out of the picture, right, uh, for a good while. So it's just Grandpa is really powerful. Blood harvesting is powerful. Uh, again, if you watch the stream, almost all of my builds revolve around trying to get blood or, or something for Grandpa. And... We'll do another video talking about that at some point. But that's pretty much the tier list, the combos, my thoughts on stuff. Uh, maybe you agree, maybe you disagree. Let me know in the comments below. Anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.